The banking industry in this country has seen massive, massive, massive consolidation. Right? There's this myth that when you have a free market, it encourages competition, right? it encourages innovation. It's not actually true. What happens when you have deregulation, when you have unlimited corporate uh, you know, action without any sort of democratic oversight, what you get is massive, massive, massive concentrations of wealth and power. Um, and right now, there are basically four banks in the country, right? These are three of them um, that have the overwhelming share of control over our financial infrastructure. Um, so the four largest banks, right, issue two-thirds of all credit cards, half of all mortgages, and hold nearly 40% of all bank deposits. The six largest institutions, uh, Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs, now have assets equal to more than 60% of our GDP, right? So these are tremendous, tremendous concentrations of power, and there's no democratic oversight. And what happens when there's no democratic oversight? Well, they do evil, exploitative things to make more money and maintain that power. So, for instance, all three of these uh, banks here have engaged in massive amounts of predatory lending, right? Uh, this is what led us into the crisis, disproportionately targeting poor, uh, poor communities, predominantly poor communities of color, with massively exploitative so-called subprime mortgages, right? Might call them like trick mortgages, right? Uh, scam mortgages might be a better term, right? These were ways of, of basically using this massive amount of control over wealth and power to basically extract more wealth from the, low, the people on the bottom of the society. Uh, this is deeply messed up, right? And we haven't put, uh, we haven't really been able to actually address this. The city of Baltimore, for instance, right, has a lawsuit pending against Wells Fargo for precisely this, right? Now, the city of Baltimore is not some crazy Marxist, right? They're not some ranting anti-capitalist radical, right? But they know what happened to the city, and they know that banks like Wells Fargo made out like bandits on the back of the poor. Uh, the lawsuit was dismissed uh, by a federal judge. They've refiled it. So that's, that, I believe, is pending. It's something to look into, right? The city is trying to hold these companies accountable, and they can't, right? Um, all three of these companies, right, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why they did this, right? Well, it was to make money, right? When they got bailed out, right, there was some attempt to put some restrictions in, right? Because we couldn't just take taxpayer money and just give it to the wealthiest when they fucked up and let them get back on their feet, right? We couldn't do that without exacting some sort of concession, right? So there was a brief moment where there was limitations on executive compensation through the bailout, where it was like, well, it would kind of be unseemly if we gave your company billions of dollars and you, you know, took a billion or two of that home and put it in your pocket, right? So these restrictions were in place, but all three of these companies left the program early, right? They made sure to basically get in a position where they could repay the government the money that they used to recapitalize their businesses based on a failed speculative model, right? Um, and they basically got out of the program so they could avoid these restrictions and start paying themselves back, right? Start paying them mass themselves massive amounts of money. So, for instance, uh, well, Citigroup here, right, uh, they're actually the best. They got $45 billion under TARP. Uh, their CEO in 2011 only made a, um, or 2010 only made a dollar. All right, um, so, uh, however, However, right, he's not hurting. He made uh, $800 million when he sold his investment firm to the bank he's now the CEO of, right? His executives got paid, uh, got paid pretty well. Uh, we've got, you know, the, the, the highest paid executive at Citigroup made $9.5 million last year, right? We had another executive making $7.95 uh, $7 million, right? So people are taking home a lot of money, and they're taking home tremendous amounts of money based on the money that we lent them to, with, you know, basically very little strings attached in order to pump their businesses back up after they have driven them into the ground. Um, let's see, Wells Fargo here. Let's see how much they money, how much money they made. Uh, they made, they got $25 billion under TARP, right? Uh, this is a company that's being sued by the city of Baltimore for racist predatory lending, right? They got $25 billion in federal money. Uh, guess how much John Stump, CEO of Wells Fargo, took home in 2010? Any guesses? Yes. <laughs> I, I heard $2 million? Ten? Higher? $20 million. A little lower. $17.5 million, right? One person does not, whatever, I don't care what you do in a year, right? If you're being funded, right? If you're being bailed out, 
by us. You do not get to take home $17.5 million. Right? So we need, we need to transform the financial industry in this country. We need to dismantle this kind, these concentrations of power. Right? Uh, there's a great report that just came out called How to Liberate America from Wall Street Rule that I definitely recommend checking out. It gives a whole series of recommendations for devolving this massive concentration of wealth and power back to the communities where it belongs. There's steps that people have been floating around, like taking your money, pulling, you've got an accountant, Bank of America, or Citigroup, or M&T, or PNC, or whatever. Take your money out of there. Right? Put it in a credit union. Credit unions are banks, but they're banks owned by their members. They don't have this massive profit imperative driving them forward. What they have is an imperative to be sustainable for the people who, who own it, um, which is the people who use it. Um, so definitely look into credit unions. You can get an account at NICU. Um, you can get an account if you have a credit union through other employers. Um, definitely look into that, because that's something that we can concretely do to take our money away from these people who are just going to continue to screw us over. Yeah. All right. One forty six. Full employment now. 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 We're gonna go that way for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, there is a, a much longer tour that we can do, um, and. But what I want to do is kind of bring us back around towards the Inner Harbor because the Columbus Day Parade is happening at 2. I want to make sure we have numbers there to make sure that people know that this protest is strong when people walk past it. But we'll do another stop when we get back down towards the Inner Harbor.